spiritual warfare. The Bible says in um, the book of Ephesians 6, um, I think verse um, from 10, it talks about that, um, it says that we do not war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the, the powers of the air. So everything you see, the invisible magnets, these, these invisible forces that cause people to, to shift or to move a certain way. And um, today I'm going to share about that. I want to share about some of the items that we have ignored in spiritual warfare. And um, I want to share about how I do it because it's biblical and I follow the Bible doing it. But many Christians are not doing it this way. And um, they ignore some of the items in the armor of God. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll read Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 18. Put on the armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Glory be to God. We see that the whole armor of God is um is addressing, you know, something we we dress up, and he says that. The first thing, get your loins gut about with truth and get the breastplate of righteousness and at the feet wear the shoes of peace, the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith to protect you from the fiery, uh, to protect you from the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So you wear the helmet of salvation to protect. Salvation is when you come to um, Christ and uh, confess him as Lord. That is the first step of um, spiritual warfare. That's the helmet. And um, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You have to read the Bible. You have to know the Bible. You have to know how to wield that sword. You have to know how to swing it, how to throw it. You have to know all the moves. So in case your enemy comes and swings at you, you know how to swing that sword, which is the word of God. You know how to apply it. You know how to swing it back when someone is trying to mess with you, when someone is trying to pervert you, when someone is trying to attack you, when someone is trying to deceive you. You know where to go in that Bible and get the scriptures. You understand it. And um, walk with truth. God, your, your loins got about with truth. Always speak the truth. Walk in truth. Be true to yourself. Be true to God. Be true to the people around you. Be a person of truth. I mean, if someone says that, hey, 
did you do this and you did it i know how embarrassing and how bad it can feel but tell the truth and wearing the righteousness uh, the, the bracelet of righteousness be right always be right let me give you an example follow the law they say wear your masks wear your mask always be right with god do what god wants you to do what god needs you to do what the word of god commands us to do that is being righteous that is the righteousness that god requires us to be obedient to his word where he says do not do this you are right or you're wrong to be righteous is not is 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 the opposite of wrong if you're not righteous you are wrong if you are not right you are wrong if you're not righteous you are flawed don't be flawed do the right thing every time you need to do like someone don't be around text you don't go around texting people wrong stuff don't go around you know looking for money for you know through ill gain you know don't go around talking ill about people don't go around mentioning this and that don't go around picking fights you know and wear the shoes of of peace the gospel of peace everywhere you go preach peace let people live in peace i am an advocate of peace and i always say that i can never this is the main thing i say because today if you go online and in general life you see christianity has become political ground you know it's a battle you know where people are mentioning and dropping names like people are dropping deeds like so and so did this so and so did that i mean i am not an advocate of that i know people who have done stuff but i can never mention their names because if i were in that situation i wouldn't want that to happen to me trust me i wouldn't want someone to call me by my past because i've done a lot of crazy things in the in the past i wouldn't want to be called by that stuff because i am not that stuff i used to struggle with that stuff i wasn't that stuff so i can't go around mentioning someone's name i don't care even if they are false prophet i can't go around mentioning people's names i can see people doing wrong stuff but i can't go I, the best i can do is um tell someone that don't do what people do don't listen to when people tell you to do this i speak against the actions i do not speak against the person because i want peace what if that person wants to come to, to christ what if they really want to come to christ and they're going to fellowship with you in the same church and you used to talk ill you know how awkward that can be because we speak like this there is no peace people don't want to come to god we we make people hate god it's like if that's how god's people behave i don't want anything to do with god and myself i used to meet such people before i was a christian at some point so many people out there they don't want to come to christ because of the way people christians are representing him so you have to walk around with peace you have to wear the helmet of salvation the helmet of salvation protects the head remember goliath david hit his head with a rock you know and he died that he wasn't protected that that fight of david and goliath was very significant to the coming of christ that small rock that the builder rejected that small stone when it was swung it hit the head the head of satan that thing that the lord talked about when he was ushering punishment to adam and eve and the snake and the serpent the king will bruise his heel his heel but he will crush your head david crushed the, the head of uh, 
Goliath. Crash Christ crushed the head of Satan. And right now, he has given you the helmet to protect your head so that you are not crushed. Because the enemy is out there trying to crush everyone's head. And that is salvation. Calling them to Christ, calling them to repentance and to live their lives to Christ. That is salvation. That is the helmet. That you always have that helmet up upon you. However much the, the enemy tries to hit, he won't hit you all the way to rock bottom. At least your head will, will not be hurt. And this is the last part. Praying always, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. That we have to pray in the Spirit. We have to pray as the Holy Spirit guides or leads us. Because He's ready to hear our prayers. Christ shows you um, dreams of people struggling about, you know, with something. People going through certain hardships. You are, you're supposed to pray for them. You're supposed to stand in for them. You're supposed to intercede for them. That is praying in the Spirit. When God shows you, when the Spirit of God leads you to pray. Tells you that pray for a certain um, state. Pray for a certain country. Pray for a certain person. Pray for a certain home, certain house. And the Lord reveals all these things. When you pray, there you are praying in the Spirit. Because you're praying under instruction of the Holy Spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Then you have to pray for all saints. You have to pray for all other believers, the people that have given themselves to Christ. To, 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 Christ, to Christ, sorry, that um, they come to Christ, that they are strong, that they do not fall, that they stay grounded in the faith. You always have to pray that for all your brethren. But that is how you, 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 you go about spiritual warfare. You have to wear the whole armor of God. If you do not wear the whole armor of God, you're going to get beat. Today we go to churches, people are not righteous, people are not telling the truth, people are sleeping around, people are not peaceful, people are fighting. And then they say they're in spiritual warfare. And the only part of spiritual warfare they, they are taking today is prayer. They say prayer warriors. Like someone just goes and prays and, you know, but they are not living right. If you are a soldier, you have to, if you are a warrior or a soldier or whatever, you have to wear the whole armor of God. You have to wear the whole costume. Because when you go to battle and your helmet is not on, you're going to be shot in the head. If you don't have the, 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 the breastplate of righteousness, someone's going to shoot through your heart. And if you ever realize that most of the dreams you have, they, re, they, they attack the armor of God that we are supposed to wear. That you will see that someone will hurt your feet, someone will take away your shoes, someone will take away uh, maybe a helmet or so. You you know they will remove a shirt or a covering from you. That means you you're not walking in you know in truth or in whatever. You've been un undressed. That means you're not. You're not covered. You have no armor. If you are to fight, you have to wear the whole armor of God. Prayer is the last thing that has been listed in this armor of God. Because if an enemy is before you, you're not going to fight them with prayer. If demons are in there and you have to cast out demons and you know from someone, those demons are not going to just listen to you. Those demons won't listen to you if you're living in sin. If you're not righteous, if you're not telling truth, if you're not a peaceful person, you're not going to chase them away. Demons of brutality, uh, carnage, and uh, 
anger, you know, malice, demons like that, you must have peace in you to cast them out because they will see the peace of God reflecting off of you and they will run. Peace is their opposite. Remember, they are dark, but they will see this light of peace and meeting off of you and you're casting them. They will run out, I'm telling you. But if you don't live in peace, you're fighting always with people. You, you, always, you can never cast out such demons from people. You can't. And all this power God has given unto us, Christ has given us this power to cast out demons. He's given us power over all these things. We can cast them anytime we feel like using his name, addictions, um, disease, all these things, you can cast them out. But we have to know. And you can only cast them out if you are wearing the whole armor of God. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Put on the armor of God.